This tooth today had some really cool and interesting anatomy. Radix endomolaris. Stick around, I'm Bill Nudera, and welcome to my channel dedicated to clinical endodontic education. Tooth number 30, lower right six, was sent to me for treatment and evaluation. Patient was seen on an emergency basis because of severe pain, rated 8 out of 10 on that visual analog scale, localized to tooth number 30. A full coverage restoration was recently placed about three months ago, and I diagnosed this tooth with symptomatic irreversible pulpitis and symptomatic apical periodontitis. The radiographic exam shows an anatomical root formation that's this classic radix endomolaris with this extra root that's generally positioned off to the lingual. These radix roots have significant curvatures that generally occur in the buccal lingual dimension that can't really truly be appreciated on these two-dimensional projection images. A CBCT scan is extremely beneficial when you see anatomical variations like this. I believe CBCT scans are necessary all the time, but if you're not sharing that same philosophy with me, at least you should consider them for cases like this. The sagittal CBCT scan shows a widened PDL space, but the true appreciation for this radix anatomy is visible in the axial plane. We can also see in the axial plane the large root system associated with that mesial root complex. When we switch to the coronal plane, it shows a clear view of that radix root. There is a slight sweeping curve back to the buckle, but nothing terribly significant here. But the significance can only really be appreciated on these scans. The bite wing image shows good marginal integrity of the restoration, so nothing to be concerned with there. The intraoral evaluation shows no signs of swelling or infection. I used a modified single tooth isolation technique with rubber dam blockout material, and an access was made through the full coverage restoration. A vital pulp was confirmed upon access, which confirms our preoperative diagnosis of symptomatic irreversible pulpitis. Because I'm treating through a porcelain fused to metal restoration, there's a high likelihood that this file is going to contact the conductive restoration and short out my electronic apex locator. So I'm using the insulated file technique to get a more predictable apex locator reading. I put a link to the insulated file technique video below. So if you haven't seen it yet, go ahead and click the link and I'll show you my technique on how to make an insulated file. I treated three orifices in that mesial root complex, but according to that cone beam scan, we see they all merge at least into one portal of exit. Working our way to the distal, and after we find that distal canal, we get some clues on the pulpal floor of where that radix root is going to be. And we call that the pulpal floor roadmap. These are basically just developmental grooves that lead us into the direction of where the canal orifices are. Once all the canals were located, I followed my normal shaping and irrigation protocols, and I used a modified single cone obturation technique with a bioceramic sealer to obturate this case. Now I say modified single cone technique because I did apply a bit of vertical heat limited to the coronal third of this root canal system, and then backfilled it with warm thermoplastic gutta percha. And here's what the final looks like. And this is what we live for. These are the results that I love to see. And even though the cone beam scan information showed that all these canals merged into one portal of exit, clearly we see that it's branching into two separate portals of exit. But the canals still merge. All around a nice technical root canal treatment with no complications or no problems. And it's really nice when things go as planned and we get results like this. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video presentation of mine today, and I encourage you to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with all the new videos that I post. I'm Bill Nudera, thanks for watching.